So foxes are certainly one of Australia's worst um, introduced pest animals. They impact heavily on um, sheep production, uh, in particular lambs, but they are also a major predator of native wildlife. In our situation, we're sh sheep farmers and foxes will um, attack and kill uh, lambs. Foxes cause a pretty significant impact on, on a whole range of animals from native species which are quite commonly preyed, on, preyed upon by them through to our livestock species which are both eaten by them but also uh, infected by a lot of diseases that foxes can transmit as well. Feral Fighters is a program which is a community program looking to, to marshal everybody in the community working with local land services to make a really significant and lasting impact on the problems caused by the feral fox. The Feral Fighters program is incredibly important and it is probably one of the best initiatives that I've seen implemented throughout Australia. It's about bringing people together. It's providing a mechanism for people to work with their neighbours in their community to address a critical issue, which is a problem with pest animals. We were certainly very conscious though from our farming background of the economic and hip pocket effect foxes were having and the environmental side was one thing for farmers and I think over time we've helped educate farmers about that but we were able to say by doing this we will save more sheep and the mm. economic benefits of that were quite immediate. It's not the fox's fault that it's here. It's not our fault that the fox, you know, this generation's fault that the fox is here, but it is our fault if, if we allow it to continue. There are a variety of tools that people can use to undertake control of foxes. The main methods include um, ground-based baiting using 1080 baits, which is a highly effective uh, method and should be done at the landscape scale, so lots and lots of people involved. Ground-based shooting, that's a fairly time consuming and the sort of technique that can be really used on a small scale. Leg hole trapping is also a method that can be used, but without a doubt, um, ground-based baiting using 1080 baits is one of the most cost-effective methods for managing foxes. Initially, I was a bit put off by the fact that I had uh, dogs and, and I lost one or two. But after realising that I'd have to shut my dogs up for some time because neighbours were putting out the fox baits anyway, I thought I might as well join join the baiting systems. So 1080, while, while the stuff that, that we use comes in a jar, is found naturally in a lot of Australian native plants. Thinking is that a lot of native animals have been able to develop a, a high resistance to 1080 through uh, exposure to these 1080 containing, naturally 1080 containing plants. It's actually not the 1080 that's the problem, it's the target of the 1080 and that's the fox which is the problem. We've got to get the fox out of the environment and then we won't have to use as much so 1080. Much 10, yeah. If you look at the statistics and the fact that they're now up to over 12,000 baits a year being put out and the number of accidental poisonings uh, hasn't gone up and in fact has gone down is testament to the fact that this program through its uh, vital education component uh, is, is trying to achieve best practice and is, is dealing with the, uh, the safety issues quite nicely. Basically to start with we do a chemical course and that means that you can then handle the uh, fox poison. The local land service people will come out to deliver the baits and then those baits will be given out then go out to the paddock and put out the baits. Feral Fighters um, in the last few years has been funded um, through the LLS. So people are able to um, get baits um, free. One of the main um, cost of putting baits, baits out doing fox control is not so much as in the cost of the baits or those sort of things, it is actually your time. Foxes are very territorial and they have huge territories. They don't know the boundary fence of my farm or Lucy's farm. If we're baiting on our farm, and we knock one or two out, um, the ones that come from the neighbours are quickly going to inhabit our land again as well. The only way in which it can be done is by everybody getting into it together and doing it in a sensible, smart way uh, by baiting uh, at the best strategic times to do it.
sometimes neighbours go months and months without seeing each other. But what we find certainly in our group is we get together and then a couple of hours later they're still standing there having a yarn. With the, um, the mental health issue that's been ongoing for, for many years with people, not only farmers but people from everywhere, we decided to use the hall which was built by my grandfather years ago and um, meet there for just a conversation on Sunday afternoon or a Friday night to watch a football game or something and just talk and um, look at our watches and oh, we better go home now, so. For both of us as, as mums, it's important that the biodiversity of our farms is maintained and, and preserved for our children. And, and we want to leave the landscape for our kids a better place than what we come into it as. Probably the one positive for me is just the engagement with the um, community and it's just sort of like you know people trying to help themselves so we try and help them and if they get a positive out of it you know we get um, you know a positive feeling out of that as well. If we keep at this uh, in the way that we are we can make the fox a nuisance, an irritant that we've still got to live with rather than uh, the significant environmental and agricultural problem that it is.